Joe, what, what do you think offensively you are as you, as you close out this week and get ready to go into game week? What do you like most about what you've gotten done? What's left on the punch list? Yeah, I like, um, I like where we're at offensively, just thinking about it coming off the field today. I feel like we're in a good spot. Um, guys know their roles. They're playing hard. We got you know, a lot of depth out wide, a lot of depth in the backfield, and a lot of positions. So feel pretty good about us taking the field and, and uh, what we can do. Just like always, you're cleaning up. It's still this group of guys, this group of 11 taking the field, has never played a game together, hasn't played that much football together still at this point. So it's always pushing to get those fine details corrected, get it everything dialed in. So when we take the field next Saturday, we, we look the way we're supposed to look. Joy, uh, Brew played with Hinden, obviously, played with Joe. Now playing with Nico, he, he hadn't really played with him. He's practiced with him quite mm -hmm. a bit. What, what's that chemistry like between Brew and Nico, and what adjustments would Brew need to make changing over quarterbacks? Yeah, the, the um, chemistry between Brew and Nico was great. They live close to each other. They're really close off the field. Like, they're really good friends. Brew has been a great leader mentor for Nico coming through who's stepping into a leadership position. Brew's done a really good job of helping bringing him along and all the off field stuff. On field, it's just it's reps. It's just how many times can you throw the same routes together. Um, for Brew, he still runs his stuff the same way. He still makes the same breaks. Um, switching from one quarterback to the next, you still got to kind of go do your thing, see what the defense gives you, how am I going to react to it, and, and the quarterback feeling how he's going to read the route and them getting on the same page. And that's nothing but rep after rep after rep on the field. And then I know the guys, um, they spend a lot of time watching tape together. So they watch, all right, how do you see this? How do you see this? And they can get synced up, kind of taking place for, as you said, not having live bullets together. Coach, what can you tell us about that in-helmet communication? I know Coach Heupel mm -hmm. earlier in camp said, hey, sometimes those guys don't want to hear yeah. us as much as they do. But what's the balance between getting the plays in, but then also those reminders, especially with the pace of play you guys go at? Yeah, I think the reminders is the biggest thing where you can talk. You can just tell your quarterback, like, you're in four-down territory right now. Like, hey, we're, in, we're thinking field goal here. If we don't get it on third down or you got two downs here, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for the touchdown here. Hey, I'm giving you a shot in the end zone. Don't take a sack. Like, you get those little quick bullet point reminders that I think are going to be really helpful that usually, and you still will, on Friday you go through with your guys. You're sitting there talking through it. Well, now he doesn't have to commit that all to memory. He's got it. He's studied it. But then he also gets to hear it right before he snaps the ball again. I think that's the biggest benefit you're going to get, along with hearing the play call. You know, you still see the signal. You do all that. But you can hear a play call now, and you're getting it from two different channels. So I think it's going to be nothing but, but beneficial. But I do think it's the situational reminders that is the biggest benefit. And we'll see how it actually plays out on game day. Um, as, as the play caller, um, how different do you feel like this group looks from a depth standpoint compared to the last team, you know, the last mm -hmm. time you all played against Iowa? And then two, what's the biggest question mark you have uh, going in, you know, nine days out? Yeah, um, the biggest thing for us, I think, is the, the depth we had. We just, we were riddled with injuries last year um, and we were young to start. Now we got a lot of guys back. We got a lot of guys that have played football and the young guys that came in that haven't played yet are really good players, which has done nothing but boost the competition level in the rooms. So we feel good that we can roll too deep out there at a lot of positions and feel really good about who's on the field and not have to adjust the calls off of it. Um, to keep not keep harping the same point, but honestly, it's just how is this group going to gel together? That's what we have to keep pushing for. That's what every rep in practice, when the ones are up there and they're rolling, it's still the first time they have run these plays together. It's still the first time they've gone through a scout week together, gone through an opponent breakdown together. So just gelling and putting all that together and the guys understanding that this extra week we have is not a write-off. It is a push to get to where we need to get next week. With Dante and Brew both having those injuries last season, how have you seen them kind of lean on each other to get back on the field this season? I think it's the culture in the building because you've seen it with the running back room as well for like Cam that was out for a while this offseason. Um, like the guys push each other. They get a, you know, you get a date that they think you can be back and everyone's just pushing to beat it. So it becomes, you know, a competition. That's what we tell the guys. Okay, you can't go compete on the field right now in spring ball, let's say, but you can go compete in the training room and in the weight room to get yourself back. So there's still that competitive nature that exists inside this building, which I think is why guys like Brew, guys like Dante, guys like Cam, they're all beating their dates back, and they're, they look great when they take the field. Yeah, Joey, how do you go about the 
you know, sort of preparing a quarterback, you know, mentally for the pressures and stressors that come with that position at a place like Tennessee and mm. all the, the good, the bad, all the things. And, and where do you feel like Nico is in that process as a young guy? Yeah, I think it's, it's one of the harder things to prepare someone for because they hear it all the time. But I, I don't think you really know what it's like to be the quarterback at a place like this until you are the quarterback at a place like this where everybody cares about every little thing that you're doing on and off the field. Um, it's just reminding him that, hey, like you're in a fishbowl, but the opinions outside this building don't affect you. Like you go, you show up to work every way, every day the same exact way, and you handle your business. Now we'll see if he will go do that after, you know, 102,000 people watch you every single weekend. It's a different animal. But he is wired the right way. Nico's an extremely even keeled kid just in general. He doesn't ride high or low, he just kind of is. So his natural um, demeanor, I think, will lead very well to him handling the pressures of this position. Coach, you probably don't have a, you know, a, a chart for it, but just how do you see the, the divisional labor going for the running backs with Cam being healthy now in, in week one? How, how many guys do you envision you know, playing? We, we love to play you know, three or four. Even last year with Jalen Wright you know, leading the conference in rushing, um, three guys played, and they played a lot. Um, you know, Dylan, obviously, is our, our seasoned guy that has the most reps, and what he is as a weapon, we've all seen. But the guys back, you know, Cam, Peyton, Khalifa, uh, Deshaun, like all those guys, They've looked really good in spring. They've looked really good in fall camp. And they've earned their chance to go show what they can do on the field. So we'll rotate guys through. And then just like in any ball game, if somebody gets hot, you got to ride the hot hand and, and let them go. Joey, kind of going off the same thing at wide receiver, you've, you've probably got the best depth you guys have had since you've been here. What's the ideal number there? And, and do you see that it's pretty even between the first three guys and however many other guys you're yeah. going to play? Um, I, I think. The first thing I'll say is the, the new season, what you're anticipating playing, is a completely different animal. You got to play more guys. You got to play guys to keep them healthy. Just 17 weeks is a lot of weeks to play football. So um, like I said from the beginning, our young guys, really good players. We feel great about them. Our guys that have been around the building, we've got a great unit, like old and young, that can all go sub in. We got multiple guys that are playing inside, outside, left side, right side. So with that, we have a lot of depth that we can move guys around and get the right bodies in the right position. One, for play-specific stuff, but two, when you know, the inevitable football happens and someone has to step up, feel like we do have a good opportunity to, to maintain the level that we need to maintain. As kind of following up with both of those, do you script to say, hey, we're going to get this trio of receivers in in a certain series to ensure that you're playing? Because I'm going to imagine heat of the game, sometimes it's easy just to keep rolling with what you have. Do you have to script to remind yourself to rotate guys like this, particularly in the year? Um, it hasn't been a thing we've done in the past. Doesn't mean that we couldn't. I, it's, it's mostly just being intentional about this series, this guy's going in. Like, we're getting that guy's out because, one, to get the guy in that deserves to be on the field because he's earned it and he's played well in the offseason. And, two, for the guy that is in, he needs to not take 95 snaps. He needs to come off and save his body as well. So like, it's the long game, right? It's you know playing guys as much as you can so you can play them more. Because if you burn somebody out in eight weeks, man, those last eight, nine weeks, there's still a lot of football left. And it's the time of year where you got to go try to win some hardware. So it's, it, it is the long game. You could script it, but it's mostly just being intentional of like, this guy gets this many, and then he's out. This guy gets this many, and he's out. And then the next one's in, and you're rotating through like that. Having a year in the system, Coach, how have you seen Nico prepare or adjust the tempo that you and Coach Hopple want to run? He, um, the kid grasps football is like the best thing to say. And I know that sounds like an obvious statement, but um, he understands what you're trying to accomplish. He feels space. He feels timing. He understands what's going on. Just innately, the kid gets football. And he studies really hard. Like his off-season preparation is really, really good. It's older than he appears to be. Um, because of that, I feel like he's grasped it well. Like, he goes out there, take the field. You don't feel like you've got a freshman quarterback that's never done it full time before. It's, you feel like you're in there, you're not pulling him back, you're not holding him back from anything, you're just letting the kid go play. Because that's when he's at his best, when you just cut that guy loose and kind of enjoy watching. What's your assess assessment of your offensive line? And have you been able to get some work for your first five together as a unit going into the year? We have, yeah. Um, I feel like the offensive line's in a great spot. A lot of veteran guys on that line, which is the one thing you want when you are starting a young quarterback. 
for as much as Nico I do think is an elite player, which he is, he prepares well, he has that old soul, that even keel. You got four dudes, five dudes that have played a lot of football in front of you. It's a different animal. Like Coop's going to get you in the right check. Your guys aren't going to bust up front and put you in bad positions. So having those guys up front gelling as a unit and with all the experience they have, it does nothing but help our, our guy back there. Thank you, yeah, thanks, guys.